books have a way of impacting on the, the lives of the writers. How, how much has this book changed your life? Well, I didn't... Um, I, I, I always wanted to write a novel, let, let me put it that way. I, this is my third novel, the third novel that I've actually written in my life. Well, actually, I, I have another one that's unpublished, that's my fourth, and then I'm kind of writing another one now. Um, and I guess from, you know, uh, my early 20s, I felt it was an important thing to do, especially because, you know, poetry is um, very difficult. You can't be... It's just, it doesn't sell you. It's very difficult to push poetry. So I wanted to write a novel. It was, it was something that I wanted to do for myself. I wanted to convince myself that I could do it. And I put in the hard work and I did it. When you were in Abuja, you used to host Infusion. It was a highly successful um, literary festival. Um, what happened to you? Can you tell us a bit more about that? I started Infusion... Um, with Dapo for Yewali. We just had that bright idea after I moved to, um, to Abuja from the UK in July 2009. He said, you know, let's, let's start something. You know, there are people out there who want to read and there's just no culture in Abuja. And I said, oh, all right, let's do it, you know. So we, uh, he, of course, is a special advisor now to one of the ministers. So he kind of dropped off the wagon you know, after about a year and a half, and I kind of ran it on my own. Uh, but for two and a half years, that's what we were doing, inviting authors, poets, musicians, performers, comedians to, you know, last Thursday of every month, you know, that was uh, in many ways, in terms of, for anyone looking for culture, Infusion was the place to be. Then I had to move to the Southwest, because my, my husband um, um, got a job in uh, the southwest and he, uh, he wanted us to move down and I agreed so I kind of moved down with my four kids um, and that was the end of infusion I did try to see if other people could take it over but it's very those things are so difficult to organize I was doing everything by myself you know it, the, the e-posters maintaining the mailing list everything um, and <laughs> You know, I don't know that anybody wants to take that, that kind of work on. I was doing that along, along with looking after my kids, maintaining a full-time job. But now, now that I've been here, um, having attended quite a number of literary festivals um, this year, um, sorry, last year, um, I decided, you know what, there's a big dream that I've had for many years, which is to have a, a very big book festival. And then I started... Um, putting it together in my mind. I'd go to all these festivals, I'd ask some of the authors, would you come to Nigeria for a book festival? You know, and the response has been really positive. So that's going to happen now in November, November 19 to 24. It's called the Ake Book Festival. It's taking place in, in Abel Kuta, in the lush hills of Ogun State. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and under the rocks and everything. So we're very, I'm very excited about that. You know, um, every day talking to new authors. You know, that we've, who some of them contact me. I hear you're doing this. Could could I come? But also, we're making it a very broad, and we want it to be appealing to the general public. In many ways, the way that the Edinburgh Festival is. So it's, we're going to have film. We're going to have fiction. We're going to have poetry. We're going to have audience. You know, talks. We're going to have master classes for people who want to do journalism, journalism, life writing, fiction, poetry. So we've got lots of really accomplished authors. Um, let me quote you from an interview you had a while back. You said, a, a reading nation is a thinking nation. What was running through your mind when you said that? There's a whole world out there of people who are uneducated, who are likely to go on to be unskilled will not be able to be of any real use to society will find themselves in a situation where they're just like driftwood and therefore you know automatically and quite understandably in looking for some means of livelihood they there's possibilities that they'll turn to means that are you know not not the positive um, the ones that we want. 
and it's it's shocking. So even there, don't let, don't let I don't want it to sound like everything's hunky dory. Even in the UK, I worked um, within my borough when I was in Hammersmith and Fulham. Well, we had a very big, a comprehensive literacy program on. Within every school, there's a literacy program. Even though you're doing English, you're doing math, you're doing, there's still a literacy program, which every teacher has to be involved in. So there was that. Why would that exist if they didn't see that there was a problem? But also, they had some really incredible um, ways of, of improving the reading culture and I remember when I was uh, working at Homer Green which is um, near Wickham not quite in, not in London um, the, the, you, you'd, the government the, the borough had this thing where they would go to all the new students in secondary school and send them a little catalogue and they would have to choose a book and the book would arrive two weeks later wrapped up just looking like a beautiful Christmas present and I can't tell you how many kids would come up to me, because I was an English teacher, um, and I would really encourage them, ask them all the time, that book you know you got, where are you now, what page? You know, just generally be on their case as far as how much they read. And many of them would read and come and say, Miss, that's the first time I've ever read a full, you know, a whole book on my own, you know? So, of course, again, you find that that would happen with certain, uh, you know, it, would, it, it wouldn't necessarily be just the white ones, especially in a place like Homer Green, but it was largely people, the non-white community um, who perhaps weren't doing enough on their own to, to engage the children with books. But even in the UK, massive campaigns to improve the reading culture and to encourage people to read. We have such a long way to go. Uh, we need to start now.